welcome hello, hello guys. so guys let me introduce you to alan no who he just helped me so amazingly when i was in a moment of stuckness what to send what to write so alan his weapon of choice is actually emails and stories um and uh, he helps coaches and course creators to create stories and emails that are compelling and make a bigger impact in 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 life of your customers and create the lifelong customers uh, using your copy using your emails using your story um, and creating them in the way that people really not only want to buy from you but also connect with you on a deeper level um i feel like alan you've got an amazing talent and i'm so excited to have you here today welcome <laughs> what happened with rose <laughs> Did they surprise? Did they surprise Alan so much with um, <laughs> with my excitement? Let's just double check what happened. Hey, Alan! Hello. I'm back. You know, you know what, Violetta? Like one of the key principles of storytelling is drama. So we just had a little there. <laughs> we had a proper drama. I felt for you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys, sorry about that. So that was oh. a cliffhanger for you. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? Everyone stayed and even more and more people <laughs> are, are coming to watch us live. So I think <laughs> I was laughing <laughs> that I I told too much about you and you were so shy. <laughs> I walked out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing because when I was introducing you, uh, you were looking so serious. I didn't notice that you froze. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. But yeah, I'm excited to get going. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Totally fine. Welcome. I can I can imagine. How do you feel now knowing that you were coming as a guest speaker and you disappeared? Oh man. Um of course it's embarrassing, but I have to accept it that sometimes things happen that's out of our control. And actually those things these things that are unfortunate, those are actually for me some ideas for emails, right? Things like this happened to me. Like you can't imagine what happened to me yesterday. It was my first time talking with Violetta. So that's kind of my way of thinking. Like anything can be an email, anything can be an idea. So good or bad, that's where I get the chance to have unlimited ideas because everything that happens to you can become content beautiful and you know what i love that we agree <laughs> on this one i don't know that much about stories and email as you know but i always remember one thing that i actually teach <laughs> that any moment when there is strong emotion like right now right. you know oh what did i do what happened exactly. is a good thing to save because there is a story that you right. may utilize in your content right yeah. exactly exactly so, um nothing's gonna be wasted <laughs> so alan tell us um how do you actually um come up with fresh ideas all the time because you create mm -hmm. also content not only for yourself but also for your clients right yeah yeah um i think one of the basic principles like i follow is of course when we think of ourselves I'm not sure if you'd agree, but a lot of us, especially the coaches, would think of ourselves as creators, right? Um, creators, and we, we need to pump up content to attract people. Now, one thing that I would encourage you guys to think of is, for me personally, I don't think of myself as a creator. What I think of myself is I'm a mirror, right? I'm a mirror. So what I do is I basically mirror what my audience thinks what they say, what they feel, right? So it's just me reflecting back what they want, what they're feeling right now. And by doing that, personally, I feel less, less pressure to come up with something because I'm not coming up with something. 
basically I'm looking at what they're already talking about. And basically um, what I do is basically I take a page out of their diary, tear a page out of it and read it back to them. So that's my philosophy when it comes to writing up, writing content, which is I'm just mirroring what they're feeling so that I can go on Amazon reviews. I can go on forums and find what they're talking about. I can talk to my clients, to my subscribers and what they tell me, that's an avalanche of content. And I can, that's where I get that sense of relief that, okay, I don't have to create really. I just need to find out what they're already talking about and just insert myself in that conversation. So, so that's one way for me to relieve that pressure and be excited about actually creating content. I love this attitude and this way of thinking. <laughs> so sounds like it all comes down to knowing your ideal client and knowing what is going right. on in their head right now. Right, right. And like to add to your point, like I, I, I was looking at the Facebook group and you had the poll there, right? One of the most popular topics that they want to know about is how to go from one to one to one to many, right? So just from there, you can think of things that, what are the symptoms, right? What are the symptoms of one-to-one? -one? Why do they want to go to one-to-many? So chances are there are symptoms to it, like perhaps time, instead of playing with their kids, they're, they're working one-on-one -on -one with clients when in fact they, they could have shortened that time, right? Um, is it like you just get too tired talking to a lot of people? What are the symptoms, right? What are the symptoms? Because there's a bigger reason why you want to do that, to transform from one to one to one to many. So what are the symptoms? And those symptoms, I think we, we are very familiar with the term landing the plane, right, Violeta? So um, landing the plane is like getting the specifics of these um, problem. And if, if you start off your stories with those, right, with those um, symptoms, then people can relate to that. And they would they would be pulled with your content that talks about things that, oh no, these are, these are things that I thought I was the only one experiencing, right? And one, one story that I'd like to share is when I was writing for a women's, so I was writing for a woman and the topic was about self-care and about like body image. So I was looking at the forum and there's one line there that really stuck, struck a chord with me. And it says, your body is not an apology, which just was really very powerful, that line. And I was thinking, I couldn't come up with that, right? It's women speaking about their issues very deep. It's like diary level insights. And I use that. I use that line to, in my email, to relate to people because what I'm doing is I'm not coming up with content. I'm mirroring what, what, what's already being talked about. And that is a symptom, right, of the problem. So if you think about it that way, like if you to record a conversation with your client, transcribe that, and you have basically like, you have like 10 types of content that you could talk about because they already told you what they want to hear from you. This is golden. Alan, I think for the very <laughs> first time, I will need to watch my own Facebook live <laughs> just, <laughs> just because of what you're telling us. It takes the pressure away from us as coaches yes. and right. wherever your client is, you're going into their shoes and thinking, what are their symptoms? What are they going right. through experiencing? And, and right. have you guys heard this? Just to even right. reminder, go to forums that will remind you where right. that client is, because we are often trying to search for new content from the mm -hmm. point of i'm a coach what do i want to write about right. not always right. uh, helpful yes um yeah. i love also that you um you mentioned that at the very beginning that you will use this story you know for your content right. but I'm, I'm curious to hear like okay there are stories there are ideas you know how to mirror but how to make it right. compelling? Mm, that's a great point. Um, so you mentioned about a good word, compelling. And I think what it boils down to, right, is one word. So 
it's a it's a one word starts with a C, and it's the key to get people hooked from start to finish, right? That letter C letter, the C word is really conflict. Conflict. Like if you think about all the movies that we've seen, for example, Marvel, like the one with Thanos. If Thanos was so easy to beat, it wouldn't take two movies <laughs> for, for him to be defeated, right? People won't be hooked until the end. So it's really the conflict that makes a story engaging. The more the problems, the more the hero, the more problems the hero encounter, the more compelling it is, right? Because if basically a story is a protagonist has a goal, but in between where he's at and where he wants to go, there are obstacles. But if you remove that obstacle and all he has to do is just walk a meter and reach his goal, it's going to be boring, right? But if he, on, on the way to that goal, he meets the girl of his dreams, but this, the girl of his dreams wants to elope or move to another country that he has to give up his dream, there's a dilemma, right? And there's that choice that he has to make and it makes it compelling because you want to find out what's going to happen. Just like your email promoting our um, call today where you, you were left frozen, right? There's that conflict because the reason you're frozen is because you can't push forward. And there's that, that open loop, right? What will happen next? And that makes it compelling. So for me, think in terms of conflict, right? What, what are not only conflict in terms of um, before they bought your, for example, you have a lot of coaching students here, feel like that. And there's a conflict for them that you want to help out. That's why they're going to get your coaching for that transformation. But at the same time, once they're in your program, it doesn't mean there's no more conflict, right? People need to, people need coaching because they have stumbling blocks. They need help with applying things. So even once they bought your product, there's still conflict inside. So there's still, when I ask for testimonials from my students, I would always ask, why did you want to, what made you decide to join the program in the first place? Because I'm looking for the conflict, right? Because if the testimonial just talks about how awesome Alan is, sounds boring, it's okay. But if they, if they said that, for example, I do emails, I can't seem to, uh, my writing seems so formal. Like my imagination, my imagination, is as bright, uh, it's as rich as a dead leaf, right? If they say that, then I show them the transformation afterwards, how I help them. It makes it all the more relatable. And people can relate to conflict, right? People can relate to conflict because every day we have problems. And if we can see that person having problems, I buy into that person. I want to root for that person. And it makes you invested. And because of that conflict, um, and if they they can see themselves in that conflict, they would want to see how the hero solves that problem because they want to solve that problem themselves. So that makes it compelling because they buy into it. They have skin in the game and they would want to finish it through because in our brains are wired to, to finish things, right? They, you don't want things incomplete. That's why there are cliffhangers at the end of TV series because we are wired to finish what we started. So yeah, if there's anything that you want to take out of this interview, just remember conflict. Conflict um, creates compelling stories. Wow, conflict creates compelling stories. Thank you for like breaking it all down. Now we can see also what happened with that email that I sent. And I'm curious right. here, guys, um, who is curious what happened after I froze? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, it's it's something that I was just playing about with. Right. But now, as you put everything, right. uh, you know, in such simple words, I can see what you meant. So we need to focus on the conflict, focus on the problem mm. of that person. Right. And in my case, in that email that I wrote, the conflict was that I was frozen on the stage and right. you guys tell me if you if you want to know what happened next <laughs> <laughs> Alan are you curious what happened next after I froze on definitely the stage? yeah <laughs> I, I want to know like how how did did you burst into flames <laughs> did you sing and dance what was it you know what was it 
that was a hook. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned exactly that was a hook. Yeah. That was a hook. I've learned mm -hmm. um, that when I create that freezing moment on the stage and I'm quiet right. and I'm looking stressed, I gather people's right. attention. And I did it mm -hmm. for a reason. I did it so people stopped talking. I did it so people right. had their eyes on me. And then I started to started with my speech. That's all it was. Oh, but that's so smart. <laughs> it was so dramatic. Mm -hmm. that especially right. my partner was there watching me. He thought that she forget what she was about to say. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's how it was. It's amazing. It was just that starter. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious to hear mm. if, if you've got anything to say about, you know, so when you are sharing the story, what do you start from? Because, you know, story may oh, be wow. amazing, yeah. but if the first mm. few words are right. boring, how do you mm. keep them reading? Oh, gosh, that's a wonderful question. That's when, when you were speaking, I, I wish you would go to that direction. And you did. It was amazing. Um, like for me to start it off with, I'm not sure if you've seen the TV series called How to Get Away with Murder. Um, that's an American TV show. And what they do at the start to hook everyone is to start with a climax. So that's one of the things that you can start off with. So, so let me give you some examples. Okay. So... One of my favorite ways to do this is to think of extremes. Right? Think, of, think of taboo. Right? Think of taboo because that gets people, people riled up. So one of, um, I, this is one of the lines that I use that kind of got people's attention. And I'm not sure how many of you are parents here, but my opening line, so my point, I was talking about like writer's block in this case, then my opening line was, your baby is ugly. <laughs> your baby is, which is kind of a taboo, right? You never, never say that to a parent. But I opened with that because that's the taboo. That's the exact opposite of what you should say when you see a baby. So think of opposites like that. So the reason I opened up, up, up with that line is, so I said, your ugly baby, that's something that you never say to a parent, right? But my point there is we, we treat our writing as our baby in some way, right? That's why we're so attached to it. That for us, it's perfection. And though the same way we think of our kids, like if they're perfection. But what we often forget is that there's one thing we often forget, childbirth. A right? childbirth is messy, it's ugly, it's full of blood, sweat, tears. It's ugly. And that's the same way our writing starts off, right? The first draft is always ugly. It's horrible. You don't want any, anyone else to see it. Um, but that's the way it starts off. We forget that. That's why we, when we think of writing, we expect that it's going to be perfect. It's going to be a masterpiece. When in fact, it, it should start off naturally, like a childbirth, ugly, then you polish it. And eventually your kid would look decent. <laughs> and in your eyes, it's perfect, right? But that's kind of the hook that I use because I related childbirth and treating your writing as, a, as your child with writing. So I, found, I was thinking, how can I hook people in? What's the taboo that will get people's attention? But I can still justify. So I came up with that. And another one, another example I'd like to share is I did this as a subject line. I said, I was thinking about you in the shower. <laughs> then my opening sentence was sometimes some of my best ideas come when I'm taking taking a shower and when I thought about this great idea and I thought you're gonna like it so I, I kind of paid it off right away but if you you try to mix it up you know um, give them that shock factor then people will pay attention and one simple one if you guys are not comfortable with doing using those openers. Another one that really worked for us is a subject line called, it's just one word. It says banned, B-A-N-N-E-D. So it's like they're banned from your newsletter or banned from everywhere else. 
and people got riled up. They thought they're gonna they're not gonna receive any more newsletter. But the idea behind the banned email is if if social media is giving you negative thoughts, ban those people who are ban the Facebook group, ban the Facebook page that's giving you face negative thoughts, leaving you depressed. So we try to open it up with something engaging. Then we use the email or the content to justify it, to make sense of it all. Okay, I get it. I get it. it because if you don't justify it, it's like clickbait, right? Which is empty calories. But for us, it's really juicy and nutritious. And yeah, that's some of my, that's my advice for opening up um, a compelling story. This is absolutely amazing, Alan. And I totally <laughs> agree. My, you know, my email rates are always related to the subject line and i can mm -hmm. I'm, I'm even looking at the comments you know what people are asking um maria is asking how to <laughs> um write stories especially headlines that grab attention malika is asking mm. how to write good headlines and am i right um mm. to say that you prepared for us the list of uh, the the subject lines uh, yeah lines? Can I share that yeah, with I, you, I, Definitely, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I prepared like 30 of our best subject lines for you guys as a gift. And we categorize them like benefit-driven, scarcity, intrigue, shock factor. So it's not just a list of 30. We categorize them so you know what to use when. Ah, oh, that's amazing. I put the link in the chat right now. Am I right? Was it digitalsolopreneur.com slash Violetta? That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. This is golden. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for yeah. That. I don't know if I would send a subject line, your baby is ugly, but you got me thinking, you know, <laughs> right. how right. I would get that curiosity going if I said to someone, you're a bad coach or, or you know. Right. Right. You, you know, another tip. Another tip, if you don't want to be sens too sensationalized, think of transactional emails. Meaning, if you have a credit card, e email from your credit card company, from the bank, like, they write it when they send something. You know it's important. Like, when they say important notice, right? Or um, payment canceled. So, those get people's attention. And you can think back on that. Like, payment canceled. Then, okay, what, what kind of payment is canceled? Then you can talk about, like, um how how recently you you one of your you for example you stop you stop your subscription to up to uh to an offer because you you realize that you don't need more information you need more execution so i i canceled my subscription blah 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 so you can justify it right you can justify it but you can pick back on what's getting their attention so so yeah th those are some of the things that you might not think of looking at but like the the like the normal bank emails there are ways that they get your attention find out what those are and try using it in your email because that's going to be unique for your subscribers that's such golden nuggets thank you alan i so appreciate that i'm concerned about <laughs> the time but i also want to let <laughs> you all know and and ask you alan um Alan is preparing for us also masterclass in Successful Coaches Club. Now I'm curious if you gave us so much golden nuggets uh -huh. here, uh, right. what are we gonna get uh, next week? Oh man, this 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 is just the tip of the iceberg because I'm gonna share with you my invisible thread system. So what that is is I'll teach you how to look at two different unrelated things and connect connect both of them and create a compelling story between the two. So I'm going to show you like how everyday things like an electric fan, um, a honking car, how can it all relate to an offer? And I'm going to show you like step-by-step. Step. So it's more of a workshop step-by-step step on how to do that. And that way, anything you see around you, your mind will be thinking, okay, how can I use this as a hook? Right, and we have a process for doing that, and that's what we're going to be discussing during the masterclass. Ah, oh, that's amazing! I'm so excited, and to <laughs> all of you, I can see that you, you keep asking questions, and and there is so much more we could uh, want from Alan. Um, 
I appreciate all of your questions, guys. I can see some of you are already in the club, so you're coming. Just to make it clear, the masterclass is happening in Successful Coaches Club. So if you are part of a club, you will have the access to it. It's uh, next week, 17th of June at 12 p.m. UK time in the club. So the same link as you always have for all of the calls. And if you are on the course, but you get clients, you also gain the access to it. Um, you've already been invited. You've got a link on your Google calendar. And if you feel like I want to be there as well and learn, uh, then you know that I'm, I'm funny about the club. It's not for everyone, uh, but I prepared for you a little application form. I put it in the chat. Uh, so you're welcome to just tell us why do you want to be in the club? What do you want to get out of it? And I'm happy to then invite you for a month free trial. So you will have a chance to hang around with Alan um, and, mm -hmm. and attend that workshop. Um, and where else? Where else everyone can, can find you, Alan? Yeah, um, aside from um, getting the freebie, you can email me at Alan, so this is my website, digitalsolopreneur.com. So you could just Alan at digitalsolopreneur.com. If you can't tackle your question right now, you can send shoot me an email. I'll try my best to, to answer it for you. Oh, thank you. That's absolutely amazing. I appreciate that. Is there anything else that you prepared you wanted to share with us? That a question I didn't ask you? Anything, any other golden nuggets? Yeah, um, I guess one thing that I love to share is like um there there's this thing called like of course people buy on emotion and justify it with logic and sometimes we can one thing that i notice like with course creators coaches sometimes we get into the habit of teaching right teaching because that's what we do we want to help teaching and insights but sometimes what we we tend to forget is that sometimes the people that we're helping one of the reasons they, they eventually end up in our programs is because they want to find hope, right? There, there's that sense that sometimes they've been down, they've failed before. So sometimes it's not just about teaching them, but maybe become an inspiration as well. So because I, I read something that's very beautiful. People need hope before they need a solution. So that's from Jonathan Milligan from his book. People need hope before they need a solution. So um, I know Violetta has a wonderful vision and mission for everyone here. Why not, in your emails, in your posts, why not articulate that? Articulate that. You can start with, I believe blank, right? For example, um, for example, I'm, I'm based in the Philippines and I wrote something for my client where his, his program is about global investing. And of course, as in the Philippines, we are a developing country. We always look up at, say Americans, Europeans, because you're in the developed world. And something I wrote for him is about, um, I, I believe in a world, in a world where Filipinos will be looked at the same light as an American or a Japanese, right? Having that vision, right? At the start of your message, what do you believe in? What do you want the world to be? Like articulate that in your message, because if you can articulate that and people buy in, buy into your um, vision, then they'll, they'll, you can write anything basically, and they'll keep reading it, right? Because think about it. If we vote, like I know in, in the UK, in London, you just had your mayoral um, election, like early May. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, when we vote, we're not voting for the person. We're voting for the promise, for the hope that that person delivers on his promises. So at the point of purchase, we're buying hope. Right when we were in lockdown, I bought a hair clipper because I can't go to a barber shop, and I was hoping my wife can do it for me. So when I bought it, I wasn't buying a, a good haircut; I was buying the hope <laughs> that it will turn out well. Right, because it it may not turn out well. Right, so hope is people want to be hopeful. Right, so sometimes if we can't convert. Think about it that way. How can we give hope? How can we paint a future that they want to buy into and put that in front? Because if they have hope, they'll be open to your insights. They will be open to your teaching because without hope, but even if you, if you give the, the secret to life, <laughs> they won't 
they won't care because they don't think that it's right for them. So combine that with conflict and whatever you learned here, I think you will have a very solid narrative that people will really bite into. Wow, that's so powerful when you were speaking about it, you know, I, I make choices based on that, you know, it's mm -hmm. what I right. buy, the, the veg shop that I choose is further away, it's not right. in the village, just because I know what they believe. It's so mm. powerful. And, and when, when, when right. you were sharing, you know, if I saw someone's email sharing, you know, that they, they, they believe and they wait for that day when it will be so equal, whichever country you're from. Right. It's, it feels right. so like, wow, they are really human. Right. They are like me. Oh, right. thank you for sharing that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's really something that everyone should, especially course creators, because my passion really, I, I want to see, I see myself as change maker and I think I see coaches as, as one of the most powerful people out there because when you, what you do is empower people. And when you empower people, not only are you helping your clients, you make their lives better. You make them a better family man, family woman, right? And that rest, rip, that ripple effect will go to their families, etc. So even if I'm just one person, even if you're just one person, I think together when we can weaponize our words, right? To help people out, it has a ripple effect. And I believe that like using these, strategies for the for good you know it's very important that's why i want to share it as well even if i were i was going into overtime i was hoping that you can get it on you, i could share it because i think just having that you know can can have you can see your content and knowing this big level of thinking you will see how you can tweak it in a way that will massage it make it more uh easy to consume and easy to absorb Wow, I so appreciate your generosity and thank you for all your wisdom. Guys, um, we will be wrapping it up. So I'll put that link in the comments one more time. Remember to, to grab this 30 amazing titles, headlines, because for <laughs> me, this was the key, you know, for people to first open your message, they need to see a compelling title. Right. Then the next step is, watch this live stream one more time seriously i'm going to watch it one more time because there was so many <laughs> golden nuggets and bombs that alan dropped on us <laughs> that i didn't consume it yet <laughs> <laughs> go through it again and please commit to take action so i want to invite you to put it in the uh, comment under this video what will you do as a result of watching? So you're not just watching, gathering this information, but you're taking right. action. Maybe tomorrow you will write an email with different headline, one of the ideas from Alan. <laughs> Maybe you will write an email right now. <laughs> Maybe you will start to add yeah, story to everything, but share with us in the chat what you're going to do. And I will see you all again with Alan in the masterclass on the 17th of June in Successful Coaches Club. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Have a great day, guys. Yay. Have a great day.